Now this video is going to be unscripted. I'm starting a cold and I just want to finish doing this video before my voice gets worse than it is right now. So the four principles of soundproofing. The reason why your soundproofing project probably failed is because you might not have understood the difference between structural noise, airborne noise, and what you should do to soundproof either one, acoustics and noise blocking. And I still get a lot of people asking a question, can I soundproof my wall using acoustic foam? And well, I have a pretty good video about that right there. And really, acoustic foams is not really for noise blocking, it's for noise absorption. The reason why a lot of people fail in their soundproofing project is not so much the difference between noise blocking and acoustics, that happens, but it's mostly because the person didn't understand the difference between airborne noise and structural noise. And that's very important because if you use the soundproofing methods to block airborne noise, but your real problem is structural noise. Now structural noise is when there is a vibration throughout the structure. Usually structural noise, 90% of the time will be the ceiling because you're underneath, somebody's walking above you, somebody's running, there's kids above your head, and it's making a lot of noise. And the rest of the reasons why you might have structural noise is because of loud bass. Now, if you have bass, somebody playing their music so loud or a movie, and you can actually feel the vibration coming into your room or I guess out of the home theater room, then yes, you are hearing structural noise. Now, adding mass to structural noise will not really get rid of that type of noise. And also, traffic and train noise can be another reason why your house might vibrate and you might have that type of structural noise. But the other reason why you might be trying to block noise could be because of airborne noise. Now this is typically when somebody is talking loud or loud music without a lot of bass. Now airborne noise and structural noise needs to be soundproof completely differently for it to work. So usually what I say is airborne noise, you use mass. So more layers of drywall will stop that airborne noise. You just add mass and the airwaves has a lot more trouble going through the wall. Now, if you have structural noise, like somebody walking above head, if you just add an extra layer of drywall, it's not really going to fix your problem. You're still going to hear the person walking above your head. Now, the way to eliminate that type of noise is to completely separate the wall from the joist. Now, to do this, you will need something called a resilient channel. Now, what this does is it absorbs the vibrational noise. The vibrations can't get from the floor down to the joist and onto the ceiling because you have that resilient channel and that air void to basically absorb all that vibration. Now you'll still hear the people perhaps talking, but now that you have that decoupled, the structural noise will be mostly gone and then you can add your extra layer of drywall. Now that's the thing, it all depends on what type of noise you're trying to get rid of, either airborne noise or structural noise. Now just the only thing to remember is the way to get rid of those are just adding mass. Structural noise, it's the vibrational noise that will go throughout a structure. Now this you'll have to decouple. So now that you know these two facts about structural and airborne noise, you'll know what to do and how to soundproof for these two types of noise. The other two things that you should know is the difference between acoustics and noise blocking. So basically, by adding mass, you're going to block noise. By adding acoustic panels on the wall or acoustic foams, you will be absorbing noise. So as I said before, I still get a lot of questions. Can I use acoustic foams to soundproof my wall? And well, the answer to that is, is no. The only thing that acoustics will do is it will get rid of the echoes in the room because if you don't have anything on the walls, the sound waves will bounce and will just make an echo, make the noise inside the room sound louder to your, to your ears, basically. So while adding acoustics into the room, acoustic panels or acoustic foams, if you're wondering how to build these, because these are around $100 each, but I built this for a fraction of the price and all you need to do is go watch that video and you'll be surprised at how easy it is to build one yourself. 
it won't do anything much for soundproofing, and that's the difference. Acoustics will make the room sound better, but if you actually need to block noise, you'll need to add mass or decouple, as I was talking, with the structural and airborne noise. And that's the difference between acoustics, soundproofing or sound blocking, structural noise, and airborne noise. All right, so now that you understand the four principles of soundproofing, which is acoustics, soundproofing, or I guess noise blocking, structural noise and airborne noise, if you understand these four facts and you know what to soundproof for, then if you go into my videos, you'll, you'll probably find that your soundproofing will be a success more so than if you really didn't understand these four principles. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll have links in the description below of different soundproofing playlists that I'll have. I'll have doors, windows, and I'll put walls. I'll try these three. And also I have links on soundproofing products that I use and recommend. And these product links are affiliate links, which gives me a commission for anything you buy using that link. You don't actually have to buy that product. And it gives me a commission at no extra cost to you and it helps me make these videos. And thank you very much for watching. Until next time.